You want to know where we're at? We're in another day in the life of the Fennel family. Not much is going on uh, compared to most days, except for the fact that we're about to open a big brand new restaurant called The Green Barn tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, doors will open to the public, and then we have our first bookings at quarter to one. <laughs> we're not experienced in this business, so God knows what's going to happen. You know, we're so lucky to have this house because my dad inherited it with um, two sets of test duties. That was when he was 21. He didn't finish paying them off until three years before he died. So um, we have this house by the skin of our teeth. Luna. The house is not particularly big and it's not particularly grand in terms of an Irish house. It's a Quaker house, so it was built to be simple. If we walk through to this room here, you'll see how small these doorways are. 1710 doorways. Uh, it's really important to use a house if you have a house like this. Uh, if you don't use the rooms, it's a real pity. So roughly there were about five to 6,000 country houses in Ireland at one point, and now there are about 600 country houses left in Ireland. Most of them have been either um, let go or burnt down or people can't afford them. And now there are about 30 to 40 houses in Ireland that are still lived in by the original families that built them. We are one of two houses in Kildare that has not been sold from the 18th century. Um, all these walls and colours were painted in this part of the house by my mother 44 years ago. And on this wall here, you'll see two of my mother's paintings. One is totally aware naturally of the perception that you live in a big house, you must be lots of money. But actually, it was working solidly every minute you were awake. There's endless sort of maintenance problems for starters. There's always sinking floors or broken pipes or windows are leaking and rotting. You know, we're so privileged to have it, but it comes with a commitment to, to hard work. We've got a very small farm now, well, and it doesn't generate the income. Keep the place in repair. That's the main objective, is to keep it going, just to keep it standing, so to speak. And so they've taken this brave move of, of opening it up and um, building the new restaurant. What do you think of the name, The Green Barn? Yeah. Well, it just seemed to work. So here we are in the kitchen, um, which is going to be fitted in the next two weeks, I think. And then this is the key space, which again overlooks exterior. By Saturday, this entire thing will be floored. I hope things uh, will keep the schedule. If you asked us six years ago, could you ever see yourself in a restaurant? I think we would have been like, what? <laughs> You know, no, neither of us have done this kind of work We're ever good before. at making quick decisions and acting upon them, I think. Yes. Yeah, I think most of our friends would say that. There's no way around it. Why? Because you don't have enough height. You don't have enough height for the cooler, for the kegs. Um, shite. Um, I'm, very, I'm super excited about getting it, the whole um, business moving from here to there. Um, I am a little bit daunted by the size of the restaurant. We took a risk. We, have taken we are taking a, a risk. risk. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. But hey, it's a well calculated risk.
Well, the relationship between this kitchen garden and the house has always been really close. And the kitchen garden has always been in production since I've ever known. And the idea of the setting of that green barn is so that you're looking directly into all this produce um, being grown. So there has, the, the idea was to have this strong connection. So the, well, ideally what we want to be doing in this garden is growing all the food that is picked that day. Jeremy, will you come and say hi and show us what you're harvesting? Oh, we're having some, some turnips. This is Dermot. <laughs> Hello. I'm very lucky to um, have met Dermot because Dermot seems to not get too stressed out at all. He's very confident that we're going to be able to supply the kitchen um, with this size plot. Yeah, I, I'm the only gardener here. Well, they were, su were supplying the produce for the, for the restaurant. We, we grow organically. The garden isn't massive, you know, it's, it's um, I guess it's over an acre. We're doing the garden, we're, we're upscaling the production of the garden at the same time. The building is going up, so, <laughs> so the two of them are moving in tandem like. So <laughs> I'm sure the lads are watching me and I'm watching the lads over at the building to see you know, when it opens. Uh, at the moment we have, we have, as you can see, we have a surplus of edge. We're waiting to, for, 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 for the building to open. We need to be able to get enough produce from this garden to be able to do, say, 150 to 250 covers in a day, if this really takes off. That's what we're trying to achieve. The best time to shoot the garden is kind of in the morning or the evening. I find photography very relaxing. Going off by yourself and going into a, a, a visual world of your own. It's always nice to try and shoot the back of the house. Yeah. Well, photography has been a huge part of my life. Um, it's taken me all around the world. It's um, been my career, it's been my income. But photography's changed. The world has become saturated with imagery. Um, it's a lot more difficult to get interesting jobs. Because being a photographer means that you're only as good as your next job. So if you've got a big country house and you've got big gardens and you've got three small kids, and you don't have a guaranteed income coming in. It's a big stress. There's no guarantee of when your, your next job is coming. Uh, so it seems a good time to focus on a new project. And this new project here, it requires full attention. I never expected that um, a small little cafe and our gardens opening five years ago would suddenly become um, a large restaurant, building, gallery, shop. It's, this, is, this seems like the calm before the storm. Maybe I'm uh, mad to think that we're going to be pretty much ready, but I think we might. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on. Why don't you run back up to the house and we'll do a quick picture of you running up there. Yeah? Go for it. Okay. <laughs> You've lost your shoe. We're definitely doing 
this to, to keep Burtown running and to pass it on to the next generation. And it's very hard working towards that, um, when yeah, that's at the end of the day, <laughs> that's what you're doing, and in our case, we're passing it on to one son. Mama, can you make some, make some Mommy, flower? Yes, Mommy, certainly. Can. I think James has sort of said to him, when you know, when you grow up, you'll live here, and, and I've and I've heard him say, but he does say, with mummy, <laughs> I'm gonna live here with mummy. <laughs> and I said, oh, when you grow up, you're not gonna want that. <laughs> Night, nurse. Um, it's the green barn, yes, it does. It does definitely, definitely scare me, moving into um, a, such a, hu a huge space uh, with, with James and I, who have very little experience. Welcome everybody, come and see the Green Barn uh, at its newest. I, I, he, I think, you know what, he, he, it's just James. It's, it's inbred in James, you know, to work in that way. Because he's got this passion for Burton and this deep desire and need to pass it on. And he, it's, a, it's a big weight on his shoulders, a huge weight. He says he'll, str he'll calm down when the Green Barn opens, but I really doubt it. <laughs> I really, and if he does, I think he's going to be thinking about what he can do next. <laughs> so. well, we guard we guard so there'll be a hedge from this people. side of the building. I think it's wonderful. I think the history here is um, it's incredible and you really can feel it. You know, it's, it's beautiful. But for me, I don't, yeah, I don't know how to explain it. I'm, I'm not, I'm, it's not as important, obviously. I don't have that pressure on my shoulders that, he, that he's holding. You know, I, I'm enjoying it and I'm here to make it work if it works. Fantastic. <laughs> you know, if it doesn't, it doesn't, you know. <laughs> you mean the Green Barn opening? Yeah, it, it is tomorrow. It is tomorrow. There was me yesterday thinking that we'd almost, we were almost ready. But. Today has been a pretty productive day. Um, all the lights have been hung. Um, the electricity hopefully is going to be switched on. As well as that, um, all the antique French furniture is coming onto site right now. All in all, a lot has been happening. It's all quite last minute, but that's what happens. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Yep. All right, cool. Okay, let's go get the furniture. <laughs> Would the two of us carry this? No. Definitely not. Okay, we need Liam. Look, we have a fountain. You gonna drive it now? Okay, so we're gonna run through this. This is a work in progress because this is brand new to everyone, including me. It's very straightforward, but it's to make sure that everyone understands what the sequence of service is. I think for tomorrow, from front of house perspective, this is definitely one of the calmest getting ready to opens so I have ever seen. I will be culinary director, definitely, always um, doing menus, coming up with the food ideas. Um, and I guess I will be managing the restaurant until we get a manager. <laughs> we've got to gravel all that, we've got to get rid of all the skip, we've got to tidy all that up tomorrow. It's a little bit different, huh? And luckily, our local farmer across the road saved the day with, the, with every card being maxed. He gave me a wad of cash <laughs> to see us through. Well, I mean, it's, at the minute, it's, everybody's rushing towards the deadline, so it's manic. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, it, I think it looks amazing. Absolutely amazing. I was very nervous. Yes, we were all nervous. Um, but James was determined, so um, we went, it's gone ahead, so we just have to hope that people come. <laughs> to 
tomorrow at half past 12 we open the kitchen and we need like two, three more hours here. We need to clean the floor, put everything in the place and then that's it. When everything is ready for tomorrow morning, I can sleep even two hours and I will be okay. <laughs> Hi there, how are you doing? Are you having a good day? How's the wine? Great wine, thanks. <laughs> All right, we're good. So where are we at, James? You want to know where we're at? Ready to go? We just get the gas five minutes ago. <laughs> it's now One good. hour before the opening. So now everything is okay. And we can open. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, very welcome. Have you got a reservation? No, we don't. Just okay. Hi, right, welcome to the new it's restaurant, so the Green Bar. Oh. Here we are. <laughs> hey, how are you? Oh, hello, hi, how are you? Do you want to come down and I'll bring you to the table? Laurie will look after you, okay? And we need to put some reserves. We're going to run out of tables in a minute. What's that? Laurie just said. You're going to run out of tables in a minute because a lot of these are just drop-ins, they're not reserved. Yeah, so that's good, isn't it? I think if you haven't left a mark in this world of some sort, to me, I, I don't see the point of being here at all if you haven't done something. Thank you so much. <laughs> I admire them a lot for all the things they have done and are doing, fighting for what they love and believe in. I think that's very brave. Uh, maybe I don't tell them often enough. They've, everything they've done is great. <laughs> Well, you know what, it's gone so well. It's gone so well and people like it so much and we both really love what we do. And it's very exciting doing what you love doing. My vocation in life has always been to try and foresee the future of Burton. When you've lived in the house or your family's lived in the house for 300 years, I have, I have intense tense, tense passion in here to hold on to this place and not have to sell it. So I've always wanted to put everything I've had into this place. I've been waiting for this moment, but I never thought it would be an organic restaurant in the parkland facing the kitchen garden. But to be honest with you, I never really knew what it was going to be. Mm -hmm. 